Good afternoon. It is Saturday, January the 3rd, 2026. I hope you all are having a fantastic Saturday here as I am as well because I got off of work nice and early so I could have a video out for you all this afternoon. Now, before I do get started and before we actually get talking about the weather, I do have a very important announcement to share with you all. As you all know from yesterday's community post that I had on my YouTube channel, that one did pretty well, by the way. So thank you all for taking a look at that. I want to reinforce that for those that are watching this video that my last day at my primary grocery store job will be on Friday, January the 16th, 2026 of this month. So after we get past the 16th, the 17th of January and beyond, I am going full time, full board ahead on the YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so because we are going full time, full power to the metal on uploads, live streams on any significant weather event and much more. So with that being said, let's take a look now at the GOES-19 True Color Visible satellite imagery here from NOAA. And as we can see clearly, there is some active weather definitely going on somewhere at some time in the United States. First of all, there's a lot of active weather going on across California. We have had some thunderstorms this afternoon. We have also had some gusty winds and some heavier rainfall. You can see where all of that is taking place right now up and down California into the Pacific Northwest. This is going to change our weather pattern as this system moves generally off towards the east over the next week or so. While there's a lot of cloud cover, lots of showers and some breezy winds all across the, the, the northeast into the eastern seaboard, but the overall weather pattern will be changing and a big monster warm up is headed your guys' way as we go into the middle of next week. Brace yourself to see how warm it's actually going to get. And I thought this would be cool to show you all from the prism temperature analysis anomaly from December 1st, 2025 to December 31st, 2025. I'll tell you, it has not felt like winter in many areas across the Intermountain West of the Pacific Northwest into California. Although the exception is the Central Valley where we have had that Thule fog where temperatures have actually been near average despite the higher elevations above the fog deck being well above average. But boy, look at um, Yellowstone in Wyoming. Temperatures 15 degrees above average for the 31 day stretch of December. That's pretty significant on a monthly average. And then of course, over much of the Great Lakes into the Northeast, you have had pretty much a truer winter this year so far with those temperature anomalies on a monthly average being below normal. So anywhere between two to four degrees below average, but that's gonna quickly change as we go into next week. Like I said, January is gonna bring a big time warm up across much of the United States. And the reason why a big warm up is coming to the Midwest and also for the Eastern seaboard is because of the upper level weather pattern that is developing here. Of course, we have this trough of lower pressure and cooler temperatures across the Northeast, followed by a ridge of high pressure over here across the Rockies, and then another trough that's bringing us the unsettled weather along the West Coast here of California. And then of course, another ridge buckled up there across Alaska. But as we go forward, what's gonna end up happening is this Greenland block up here over Greenland is gonna start breaking down and that's gonna kind of melt its way into the Midwest. And you'll see that here taking place over the next three to four days as we fast forward this. And of course, this is the United States. So you can see that Greenland block falling apart a little bit, and then you're going to start seeing ridging uh, building across the Northeast as this Greenland block slowly breaks down over the course of the next three to five days. And that's going to set the stage for warmer, much warmer temperatures over the Northeast, the Great Lakes, and across much of the Appalachians into the Deep South. Because what you see here is also southwesterly flow aloft, okay? And what that means is you're going to develop lower pressure over the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains than higher pressure. And so what that's going to do is it's going to draw in warm Gulf air off the Gulf of America into the Midwest and also into the Great Lakes. And so the ending result is temperatures are going to be well above average for the month of January, at least for the first, say, uh, for days three to six. 
And then of course, on the descending node over the west, we're gonna see a slight cool down with that colder air advection coming in out of Alaska. Anytime you get that. So uh, a kind of a learning curve for a lot of you that are watching this is, so let's kind of fast forward it right about in here. So anytime you do get southwesterly flow, you tend to get warm air advection, okay, at the surface. Anytime you get northwesterly flow on the backside of a trough like what we're seeing here, as long as it's quite progressive, if not, even if it's amplified, you tend to get cold air advection. That means colder air moving over what was once warmer air. Temperature change with distance and time. In other words, that's what the word advection actually stands for. So you can see how this plays out here. Lots of ridging is going to be in place uh, for a while for the Midwest uh, beginning early next week or early this week, that is Sunday and Monday, but really by Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to start warming up and that's going to continue. But then the pattern tries to change briefly again as this trough tries to develop in the Midwest. That brings in some cooler air with it, but it's going to be somewhat modulated because, of course, large-scale ridging does prevail here over much of Canada. So what does this mean with the temperature anomaly forecast? A lot of you are curious, like, where in the heck is winter at for a lot of you in the Midwest? Really haven't seen much in the way of any Arctic outbreaks this season so far. And a lot of you are wondering, is that pattern going to change? Are we going to, are you all going to see below average temperatures? And the answer is no, it's not going to change anytime soon, at least with what our deterministic and our ensemble models indicate. So putting this into motion here over the next, say, two to four days, you can see temperatures are going to be well above average for the high plains and even for the deep south here. Temperatures running between 15 to 25 degrees above average, even into the Great Lakes, you're going to be seeing really mild temperatures for the month of January. You can't get any better than that. If you all hate the cold temperatures, well, you're going to like this forecast, and this is going to continue for a while. Look at this. Doesn't get any better than that. I mean, temperatures as much as perhaps in some areas, 25 degrees above normal. Look at this over Hudson Bay in Canada. You got temperatures 30 degrees above normal. And like I said, it doesn't look to change for a while. Uh, even going out to day seven, day eight, day nine, it is still going to be average to above average temperatures for the month of January. But again, that is very far out. We're looking at day eight to day 10. And then by day 10 to day 14, we can see maybe more colder air coming in, but really not the persistence in Arctic outbreaks that we saw back in 2020, like we saw in previous or past winters, where pretty much half of this nation would be in blue and purple, and this over here across the West would be warmer than average. Not seeing that this year so far, at least on the European model which is good news for a lot of locations that don't like the cold weather, and it's bad for some locations that do want the cold weather, right? If you're a cold snower lover, this is not your pattern. What does this mean as far as precipitation goes? Well, looking at the precipitation type rate, inches per hour forecast, basically a radar simulation on what the future is looking like when it comes to weather forecasting. And so you can see over California, of course, I can't zoom in very close of otherwise it'll get cropped out, but you can see California showers, thunderstorms. Some of the storms could produce water spouts and tornadoes today. There is a marginal risk of severe weather out for the central Valley along the California coast here of San Francisco. So keep that in mind. And also some of the storms could produce some um, small hail as well and some uh, damaging wind gusts as well. So keep that in mind if you're out and about for today and into the day tomorrow. Yeah, watch the sky carefully because they're, ooh, and I thought I heard thunder um, off towards my east. So yeah, we're getting some stormy skies right now here in California. And then it looks like that will continue all the way through Monday. So tomorrow is just a wet and stormy day, strong winds, heavy rainfall, and that continues across California until we get into, say, Tuesday morning when things should finally dry out for a while. But as we look across the Midwest here for early next week, we get these little passing systems that do, don't do much other than the heavy snow and heavy rainfall that looks to return across the Pacific Northwest like Oregon and Washington once more. 
uh, but really nothing too significant in the upper or in the weather pattern where we see blockbuster blizzards, snowstorms, ice storms, nothing like that. We were thinking about something developing later down the road on the Euro a few days ago uh, from the December 31st video. We were thinking that maybe an ice storm would develop in the Midwest, but that has since gone away. And that's the reality when looking far out into the future on these global deterministic models. There's a lot of uncertainty that resides further out in time you go. But look at this. Good news for Thursday and Friday. Weather pattern looking nice and quiet until we stip, stomp, stop into Thursday here and Friday next week where we have a system that we will need to keep an eye on for for the potential for severe weather. You can see a cold front right here. You got a warm front and you know what that means with a dynamic upper level low like this. That means maybe some tornadoes and some gusty winds associated with that system. This would be for day um, six, day seven. And as we go forward out in time here on the model, and that's all we really see there is that system. And then uh, we take a break and then look at this more rainfall potentially for the deep south. And that's a system that we will need to really watch closely because, as you know, with colder air coming in out of the north and this system trying to work its way northward, we can get some freezing rain, sleet and some heavier snowfall on the northern side. And that's what ends up happening with this type of system. Far out in time, you can see again some of that colder air wrapping in on the back side. You get some snow there over central Texas, maybe even in parts of the nor the northeast with some heavier rainfall. But of course, very, very far out. This is day 10, day 12. So I'm not really betting hopes on any meaningful precipitation in the form of snow for Texas. For a lot of you that literally saw that, I'm like, whoa, are you kidding me, David? There's going to be snow in Dallas. Don't say that there will be because there's not going to be. I don't think it's going to happen just because how rare that is to get a big snowstorm like that in Texas. It does happen, but it's very rare when it does. And then down the road, just really not anything big, really. Just kind of a boring, mediocre pattern setting up. Now, when it comes to the rainfall totals, this is what is interesting, depending on what model you actually look at. The European model thinks that there will be some pretty significant rainfall for the deep south in a short amount of time there with rainfall totals in Louisiana, Mississippi, as well as Texas, anywhere between three to five inches of rainfall, more additional rainfall to come through Monday and maybe even into Tuesday morning for California. That's what this is all about. Anywhere between one to three inches additional rainfall and very heavy snowfall for the mountains with maybe up to another five to six feet of snowfall for the higher elevations above 6,000 feet. And then of course, for Oregon and Washington, you're looking at more additional rainfall there. QPF that is, um, quantitative, or wait, yeah, quantitative precipitation forecast. And then yeah, that's this is what this is showing. Now, if we look at the GFS, mm, not so much. <laughs> not so much for the rain uh, for the deep south. So you look at one model, it's like, oh, Oh my goodness, a lot of rainfall on the Euro. When you look at this, oh, wonk, wonk. Not so much there over Louisiana, Arkansas into Texas. So yeah, that's why you don't rely on one model run or one model in itself. We got to compare the two and this is what we have for you in today's update. So let's take a look now at the snowfall forecast because some areas are going to get more snow and some areas are going to miss out and actually a lot of areas. And of course, it's the typical usual places here in the upper Midwest. Not going to see a whole lot of snow over the next 10 days, unfortunately. With the above average temperatures, it's going to be a little bit harder to get any snowfall out of these systems. And then, of course, over the Intermountain West, like California, more additional snowfall expected. The Cascade range there of Oregon, Washington, and the Northern Rockies, and even the, some of areas like the British Columbia or Rocky Mountains there, you're looking at additional intense snowfall accumulations. And of course, for the Northeast, you're looking at more snowfall to come here, at least on the GFS model's eyes. We look at the European model really quickly. You can see a similar snowfall amounts there over the next 10 days. So that's good news. At least if you want to find snow, you could actually find it in the extreme Northeast, but not so much in the Midwest this season really lacklustering the snowfall. And hopefully that changes because remember that snowfall forecast that I made back in early and mid-October. 
I did think that maybe three or four feet of snow will fall would fall here, but mm, doesn't look like that's going to happen, at least for the time being. But anyways, before I do in the video, folks, I did want to make that announcement one last time before closing out this video is on January 17th, I am going full time. I repeat, I am going full time on YouTube meaning I will be uploading daily on the YouTube channel, including live streams on severe weather events, winter weather events, tropical weather events, like if there's a big fat hurricane out there like we saw with Hurricane Melissa back in early October, which impacted far um, po western portion there of Jamaica. We all remember that one. That was a big monster hurricane, possibly historic. Uh, but yes, I am quitting my primary job to focus my time with you all here on the YouTube channel. And I cannot wait for Saturday, the 17th of January to come on around so we can start tracking weather in real time here on the channel. As always, have a great rest of your Saturday here on the third day of January 2026. I'll be back with you more maybe tomorrow with another weather forecast.